two, one, go. Ah. <clears throat> oh, I got stuff on my pants. Hello, and welcome to week three of Beater Talks for the Project 40 Collective's monthly takeover. And once again, my name is Grace, and for this week, we will be sharing, well, I will be sharing an interview that I had, and we are going to talk about diversity in a different context, um, different from last week's interview with Kaylin about inclusion. And so, for this week, I hope that you enjoy this interview, and I'll see you back in a couple of minutes. See you then. One of my hopes for Asian Canadian artists is that they have more outlets for their creativity, whether it be through performance or um, exhibiting their own work, creating their own work. I believe that it is very important to develop that um, artist to audience relationship and have and being able to share your work with the community because it's where you learn about other perspectives, you hear other stories, you hear other people's feedback, and it's very important in developing one's craft. I hope that emerging Asian Canadian artists will have more opportunities to work with professional Asian Canadian artists in their field. So for example, in theater, we have Marjorie Chan, Nina Lee Aquino, these big names and in the theater world in Toronto um, these are Asian Canadian artists who are professionals and they know a lot about their field they've seen a lot they've created a lot they have um, they have a lot of things to say about their craft different styles different ways of approaching things and from these you learn so much so many lessons to learn um, and even just to pick on their their thoughts it's it's a great thing because you get to see how one professional did it and the other how the other professional did it and how can you apply or do you see any similarities and differences between their craft making to yours and that is another important aspect in creation is that you there's no one sole perspective um, there's a lot of perspective around you and learning from professionals who are very successful in their field will help you get to a level of um, art making my hope for the future of Asian Canadian artists, and this is applicable to artists of any minority regarding gender, race, sexual orientation, etc., etc., is just to get the opportunity to play more characters that, that expand upon the preconceived notions of what these groups of people are. You know, characters that are important to this story and don't exist solely to be a token minority character. You know, personally, as someone who would like to go into film acting one day, I've noticed that, um, and this happens more so in film as opposed to theater, that a lot of minority characters, and especially heavily Asian characters, are often portrayed as as caricatures or stereotypes. And my own, And my main worry is that if this is the only way that the, uh, this group of people is being portrayed, then there are audiences that take these negative stereotypes and generalize them to these groups of people in the real world. My main point is just that I would like to see more roles made available to minorities that are more grounded or based in real life and are not reliant, are not dependent on the race and exist for reasons more than to just be the token minority character. I hope that 
Asian Canadian artists can keep on having chances to tell their stories, especially on the larger scale in terms of getting more funding, getting more recognition, and getting a bigger audience to appreciate what we have to say, as well as speaking truthfully about our identity and the intersectionality of like where we are and where we came from, why it's important for us to tell our own stories, and maybe not just our own stories, maybe other people as well, but just getting that chance to explore and get better and get more experience and get more exposure is what I really, really hope for. I also hope that Asian Canadian artists still talk to each other, um, still build up that com community. I hope that I get, or we, as Asian women get less objectified and less sexualized. I also hope that we can start playing some of like the non-traditional casting roles such as like Lady Macbeth. If people are open enough to see us in those roles and see us in the audition room and not just disregard our submission just because we're Asian. I also hope that there are more amazing Asian women and very strong Asian women, maybe not physically strong, but emotionally and mentally and culturally strong. That relates, I guess, back to the first question of what I hope Asian Canadian artists do is keep writing strong and beautiful and well-rounded Asian women because then I get to play them. <laughs> it's really hard being an Asian woman because you never know what you can submit for. It's more true in TV than in theater. I think theater is starting to get a little bit better with the imaginative zone. Like, for example, if you're playing a family, a family of sisters, they don't necessarily have to look alike or be of the same race. And I think theater sort of opens up and allows for that, whereas TV is still sort of stuck in that very realistic sort of portrayal. But I don't know, we're becoming a more and more globalized world, so I don't think that it's not realistic. That is unrealistic to have a family of people from all different races. I can say that there are a lot of great opportunities here in Toronto that are available to me as an actor, few of which are theater festivals such as The Fringe, Summerworks, Next Stage. Um, there are a lot of emerging artists programs that are catered towards youth and creation and producing and performance and sharing your work with a wide range of audiences. And what I really enjoy about these programs and initiatives is that they attract a wide demographic. I guess the only downside to it is that because for the emerging artists program rather is that most of these programs are catered towards youth starting from the age of 16 and until the until 21 for most of them. And there's that question of okay so after 21 now what? What are the programs that are available to you especially if you are still interested in exploration and experimentation and you are not ready i think that there should be more opportunities for emerging artists who are not between the ages of 16 and 21 maybe we can have more opportunities for actors or artists in this case um, who are above the age of 21 and still wants to keep creating and experiment and explore a lot of things that are around them. Uh, other than that, these the programs that are here in Toronto are just great. They do have their main audiences. They have, they want to master something and it's a very useful outlet for emerging Canadian artists and for me as an actor to have and to know that I have a chance to be a part of that something. First of all, I think it's important to recognize the great progress we've made in that diversity in art and media is a much more prevalent topic now than ever. I think it's also important to recognize that when we're using the term diversity that 
that word encompasses a wide, wide range of people. You know, and if I'm being honest, I think sometimes in arts and media that certain minority groups are favored or represented much more than others. I think we just can't, we can't get discouraged by the way things are now, by the lack of opportunity. And I think we just have to continue to improve ourselves, to become the best possible actors that we can be and working towards our craft. And if the roles we want aren't being made available to us, then I think that involves us having to start creating our own content and making the roles that we want and not, and not just waiting around for someone else to create those roles and make them available to us. We have to start taking things into our own hand. And I think writers and content creators just need to remember that the human experience is such a complex, convoluted one. And it can't be completely encompassed within one particular type of person. You know, the sooner we start realizing this, I think we'll be able to see that as different as we all are, we're all sort of inherently the same as well. I think we can work towards these goals by by really being brave and telling the truth. And I think, feel like as a young Asian emerging artist in Toronto, there's a stigma against speaking the truth or speaking about the work. And you get a lot of backlash. I guess it's true for everyone. You get a lot of backlash if you step on the wrong toes, if you don't, if you don't communicate well with others, you don't form your connections, or you don't go to these gatherings and you don't know people. For me as an Asian artist, it's really, really hard because when you look around, there's no one like you. So you have to sort of form these communities by yourself and like make friends and actually put yourself out there, which is a very, very vulnerable and very intimate experience. And I think one way that we can really do that is to get connection, is to reach out to people and ask them for help. And those people in power who are more experienced can easily lend a hand and say, yeah, like I see you, I really see you and I see your work and I really appreciate your work. So please keep doing it. Please keep getting more experience. That's what I really want to see in the future of Toronto is people recognizing me and seeing me on stage or seeing me as a directorial work and acknowledging that. Whether it's any good, like that's okay. Like, like it's supposed to be bad right now because I'm trying to learn and trying to get more experience. So it's just someone who is older and more experienced can just give you a nod and be like, yeah, like you did good. Like thanks for, thanks for working on your art. And I think that's so important is being acknowledged for doing something really small. And that's why I am really appreciative of how I came out. I came out after graduation because I've had such a supportive community and I have such strong friendships with a lot of people and who are not just Asian, who are people of color in the theater community that supports me and support my words. And I really appreciate that. And I think that's exactly how we need to keep moving forward, is to keep being supportive of each other and, and supportive of each other as artists, but being truthful about the work. I think that we can be the change Asian Canadian theater needs by getting involved. And by getting involved, that means seeing theater, observing theater, observing the people in the theater, from the audiences to the production team. Compare your observations from one production to the other and think of how this relates or how this connects. Asian Canadian theater scene and if there's change that needs to be done in the Asian Canadian theater scene then it has to be known by a lot of people or else they don't hear about it they hear about it it goes to one end and then it's out and no one listens to it no one does something and then we are still stuck in square one it's very important to be an activist for a cause that you are very passionate about and in Canadian theater, Asian Canadian theater scene, it is 
quite prominent that there are not a lot of Asian performers on stage. It's kind of discouraging to see that there's not a lot of them on stage because if you are someone who is trying to get into the industry of performing and acting and you want to live in it, not being able to see people that you identify with as your own can be very disheartening. You don't get to see things in their perspective. You get to see it in other people's perspective, which is which is good, but you can't really identify with their struggles or or their some of their stories. Maybe Asian Canadians can be performers too. Maybe Asian Canadians can play non-Asian characters or characters who are not stereotypically for labeled as Asians. Having if there are gender blind castings, there should be racial blind castings of some sort. Um, <laughs> there shouldn't be any Asian characters. All characters should be open to Asian performers. Theater is all about empathizing with people and if you only empathize with people who all look the same then what is there to empathize for? I think like a lot of things that I really value um, with, about the people that I admire and respect in theater and artists are people who are courageous and they take risks and they know that they're being very vulnerable and that they may not they may not know if people will like it and they may not know if they get a great review get like five ends or whatever but they still do it because they know that it's an important story and they speak from the heart. They want to represent a group of people that are not necessarily spoken of or advocated for. I think that's how we can be the change is, is keep the passion that we have in school and keep like the drive that we have like, oh, I'm doing like, I'm still in school but I'm doing five million different plays. It's like keeping that in us as we come out into the real world, so to speak. Maybe it's not necessarily what aligns with your ideals, or maybe you don't necessarily agree that this is a good script, or, oh, I'm not a performer, so I'm not going to perform. It's like, no, like, do all these things, try all these different things, and keep that passion going, because you have to be courageous if you're scared, and you're not doing as much as you want to, like, you're gonna have so many regrets and I feel like feel like that's how Asian Canadian artists can really be the change right now because we're getting more exposure, we're talking about these things and, and internationally and not just in Toronto. There is a reason why, because there are a lot more Asians in Toronto now, so we have to be the voice for our community. Doing what we love to do is the reason why we do things and maybe we're not doing it for other people, maybe we're not doing it for um, our community, but we have to do it for ourselves. And I think that's really important to me, is like, like getting the chance to do your art for yourself. I know so many Asian artists now, not just like performers in theater, but like performance artists or visual artists or designers in production. And it's really exciting. It's really great when you can fit a team together to do theater and they're all Asian, like there's something so triumphant about that. When I feel about the future, I'm very hopeful. When I feel, when I think about the present, it's kind of intimidating. Like there's still a lot of backlash, there's still a lot of struggle. Art is already a struggle, so like being an Asian artist is like even more of a struggle. But I don't know, like when I see the future, like it's good, like it's really great because I know so many people are fighting to be heard and that's what matters at the end of the day. What I'm just going to summarize about what we've all talked about is one, the struggle is so real fam. I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> and like, we're saying things that haven't not been said before. Two. Due to the fact that we don't have a lot of opportunities to fail as artists, we don't have a lot of opportunities to grow as one as well. And that is really unfortunate because when people start hiring POCs, it's 
kind of hard to not feel like there's that expectation that we have to be excellent at what we do. It's like a very different type of pressure that we have. And thirdly, it's like, like I guess our frustration really comes from the idea that people add POCs for the sake of diversity, right? And we don't want that. We want you guys to hire us because we are good at what we do. I think that frustration is very personal on my part, primarily because this is what I want to do for a living. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. I love it. I hope that this week's theater talk has been interesting for you. And I'll see you next week when we start talking about reflections. And I'll even sing to you guys. Y'all great? Thank you once again to the Equity and Diversity Committee at the UTSC P P40 for giving me this opportunity to vent and for a bunch of people that have made this project possible like Felix, John, Josh, and Arnold, y'all the greatest, and for the people who have been supporting me on this project and my family. Like, I love you guys so much. I'm gonna hug the camera because it's gonna be a virtual hug. Okay, hug, hug. Yes, okay. Goodbye, so long, farewell. Yeah, I'm just gonna turn this off. Let's go.